Shall I start, sir? Please. Uh, I, this, uh, I just, on behalf of uh, IPS South Zone, CME Committee, I'm happy to give this memento as a token of love to you, and it will reach you in a couple of days. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for accepting. You can continue, madam. Uh, good evening, and at the outset, let me thank all the organizers and the office bearers of Indian Psychiatric Society South Zone for giving me this wonderful opportunity. And uh, thank you, Chairperson Raju sir, for that uh, kind introduction. Uh, so my topic is when sleep rhythm goes awry, an approach to circadian rhythm, sleep-wake disorders. Why do we sleep? Is it just a waste of time? Perhaps no, and that is the best time that we are at peace of mind with ourselves and the others are at peace of mind with ourselves too. And even in the Maslow's hierarchy, sleep is one of the basic physiological aspects, the basic things are lower down the hierarchy. It is not a waste of time and we see the importance of sleep. This year, 2021, the World Sleep Day was just a few days back, March 19th to be precise. And this year's slogan is regular sleep, healthy future. We spent up to one third of our lives sleeping and sleep problems. It's without you. Your slides are not protected well. My it's I just it's not seen, sir. No, no I do click on, on, you, have to, you have to click on the single slide uh, icon. Click on the first slide and then probably go to the other. One second, sir. One second. Ah, oh, yes. Yeah. Is it visible now? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we think about, uh, um, we, we spent about one third of our lives sleeping and sleep problems constitute a global epidemic that threatens the health and quality of life for about half of the world's population. And the important aspect is that most sleep disorders are preventable or treatable, yet most of them are undiagnosed. And who should be the best people to detect sleep disorders and treat them? None other than us psychiatrists. Now, what is circadian rhythm sleep wake disorders? The main feature of this is an inability to fall asleep and wake up at the desired time. Switch it to the next slide, madam. Yes. What are circadian rhythms? Is it okay, no. sir? Uh, no, next no. slide. You have to go for the next slide. You are in regular sleep on healthy feature slide, oh. and you have to go to the next slide. Madam, please, please click the slideshow button, madam. Yes, sir, I'll do that. Slideshow. Ah, no, no. Still talking. Is it moving now? Is it moving? You go what to the previous, you go to the previous slide. The primary characteristic of all circadian rhythm sleep-wake disorders is an inability to fall asleep and wake up at the desired time. Is it moving now? No, you have to go through two slides before. You are um, previous, slide, previous slide. Previous slide. Previous slide. This one is ah, it? Right, 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 right. Okay. M madam, please leave the slideshow below the red line on the top, madam. You just click on that. Slideshow, you see, you see yeah, the slideshow slide there. Show. Yeah. Please click there, man. No, no, click on the slide. 
uh, from the current slide yeah is it okay what, what are circadian rhythms is it the one that is seen what are circadian rhythms yes 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 yeah. so what are circadian rhythms they are endogenously generated oscillations in physiology and behavior with a near 24 hour period and human circadian period averages slightly longer than 24 hours with a range of about 23.5 to 24.5 hours in sighted adults and the circadian system is it moving now uh -huh. is it moving the caption is what is entrainment is it moving no 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 no, no. so i think i'll uh, end the slide show and yeah now guys yes yes yeah. now what is entrainment the circadian system is synchronized uh, it is synchronized to the 24 hour day by signals from the environment by a process called entrainment in humans entrainment typically occurs via the light dark exposure and these the main time giver in the environment which we call as seed gibbers is the sunlight now why do we study the circadian rhythm sleep wake disorders circadian rhythm uh, sleep disorders are probably under under diagnosed and they overlap with other sleep disorders so their diagnosis and treatment are essential they cause significant mental and physical and social and professional sufferings and vulnerability to psychiatric disorders like neurodegenerative and metabolic disorders and of course there are other metabolic disorders including obesity type 2 diagnosis diabetes mellitus cardiovascular disorder and cancer cardiovascular disorder and cancer why do we study circadian rhythm sleep wake disorders regarding neurodevelopmental comorbidities therapy using a chronobiological approach is complementary to the usual clinical care and sleep disorders and circadian rhythm sleep wake disorders are a factor of vulnerability of suicide risk of relapse and pharmaco resistance treatment using a chronobiological approach reinforcing the entrainment of the sleep wake cycle is complementary to the usual treatment treatments and diagnosis of uh, circadian rhythm sleep wake disorders associated with a psychiatric disorder is of major importance because of the following reasons now circadian rhythm sleep wake disorders as per dsm 5 it is a persistent or recurrent pattern of sleep disruption that is primarily due to an alternation of the circadian rhythm system or to a misalignment between an individual's endogenous rhythm and the sleep wake schedule needed for work and social activities which is associated with daytime sleepiness or insomnia and causes clinically significant impairment or distress in at least one domain of functioning that is social or occupational madam still it is not in sync it is not syncing right ah right now i think when i put it in the other way it is not going is it okay now ah yeah so let us examine the different types of uh, circadian rhythm sleep wake disorders we have delayed sleep wake cycle in which there is a stable delay in the timing of habitual sleep period then we have at least more than 3 hours then we have the advanced sleep wake cycle in which we have the there is a stable advance in the timing of habitual sleep period then we have irregular sleep wake type in which there are more than irregular sleep three irregular sleep bouts in a 24 hour period but normal total sleep time for age and then we have non 24 hour sleep wake type in which there is a delay of daily sleep wake pattern with period more than 24 hours and all these four are otherwise known as the intrinsic intrinsic circadian rhythm sleep wake disorders and then we have the extrinsic sleep wake disorder 
which is the shift to worker type, that is, there is more than one month of sleep disturbance related to a work schedule that overlaps with a normal sleep. And in DSM-5, we have only shift to work type as the extrinsic sleep disorder, whereas the International Classification of Sleep Disorders also includes jet lag disorder, which I'm not going to speak about today. Now, delayed sleep fake type, sleep fake that is delayed by around three hours when compared to the general population that is known as the night, they are called as the night owls. And if allowed to sleep at times that are consistent with the endogenous biological night, sleep duration and quality are normal for their age. They present with insomnia when attempting to sleep at socially acceptable times or accompanied by early morning fatigue or difficulty awakening. And another differential diagnosis of delayed sleep fake type is normal late sleepers. Not all people who sleep, sleep late do have DSWT, but only if they have personal, social or occupational dysfunction, they are diagnosed with delayed sleep fake type disorder. In delayed sleep wake type disorder, their sleep is normal if they are allowed to occur during their desired window. Now, then next is we have advanced sleep wake, sleep phase type. Here, the patients exhibit a stable sleep wake cycle that is advanced in relation to conventional types. They fall asleep between 6 and 9 p.m. and wake up between 2 and 5 a.m and they present with symptoms of difficulty in staying awake in the evening and early morning awakening. If allowed to sleep at times that are consistent with the endogenous biological night, sleep duration and quality are normal for their age. Now, the next is we have advanced, yeah, sorry. <coughs> Non-24 hour sleep wake disorder. This occurs when an individual sleep wake pattern are no longer entrained to the 24 hour physical environment. The sleep wake cycle follows the endogenous rhythm, which is slightly more than 24 hours. Individuals have symptoms of insomnia and excessive daytime sleepiness, and they occur usually in blind individuals. Irregular sleep wake type is an irregular pattern of sleep with at least three distinct sleep periods occurring during a 24 hour period and the symptoms are insomnia, excessive sleepiness or both. And then we have shift work disorder, which is characterized by sleep and wake disturbances for at least three months in the context of chronic shift work defined as being required to work during the preferred sleep period. This is associated with regular or intermittent night shift, and they present both with excessive sleepiness while at work or difficulty falling asleep during the night time. Now, how many of these sleep disorders affect our population? Delayed sleep phase cycle affects 0.7 to 0.8% of population and the highest prevalence is in, among adolescents. Irregular sleep wake type is seen among people with neurodegenerative disorders like Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, and neurodevelopmental disabilities and schizophrenia. And the non-24 hour sleep wake type, uh, sleep wake type is seen in blind individuals due to the lack of normal photic and training. Comorbidity. And there is a high comorbidity for psychiatric disorders in individuals with delayed sleep wake type, depressive disorders, seasonal affective disorders, and obsessive compulsive disorders are very common in delayed sleep wake type of sleep disorders. And also, this is a sleep disorder which is commonly seen among adolescents and young adults. So we have to tap for these disorders when patients present to us with this kind of a disorder. In advanced sleep wake type disorders, mood disorders and familial migraine are quite common. 
and in in and in irregular sleep wake type disorders as we have already seen alzheimer's disease parkinson's disease and huntington's disease are, they have irregular sleep wake type disorders now the most important one the shift to work type disorder and they have a risk of other disorders like breast cancer gastrointestinal disturbances cardiovascular diseases menstrual irregularities and accidents and therefore this cannot be taken lightly but nobody addresses this issue now how do we approach sleep disorders now when a person comes to us with insomnia and excessive sleepiness how do we proceed we do take the details of a sleep history and we'll come to the details of sleep history later and physical examinations and we see if the symptoms are primarily due to an alteration of the circadian rhythm timekeeping system or a misalignment between the endogenous circadian rhythm and exogenous factors affecting the timing and the duration of the sleep if it is not due to this then we have to evaluate for other sleep disorders is there a primary insomnia is there a sleep related breathing disorder obstructive sleep apnea is quite common though it is underdiagnosed hypersomnia restless leg syndrome mood disorders if it is due to a circadian rhythm difficulty we diagnose it as a circadian sleep wake factors affecting the timing and the duration of the sleep if it is not due to this then we have to evaluate for other sleep disorders is there a primary insomnia is there a sleep related breathing disorder obstructive sleep apnea is quite common though it is underdiagnosed hypersomnia restless leg syndrome mood disorders there is some problem here. if it is due to a circadian rhythm difficulty we diagnose it as a circadian sleep phase sir ramkrishnan sir please mute sir ramkrishnan sir please mute sir please mute sir let me continue if there is a circadian rhythm sleep wake disorder and that is diagnosed by mainly keeping a sleep log and actigraphy for at least 7 days and let us continue with the let us see how it is going to be done there are six important principles when we take a sleep wake history define the specific sleep problem when exactly the person is going to bed when exactly the person is getting sleep how is the quality and the quantity of the sleep when is the person rising how is it daily affecting assess the clinical cause and recent factors that affect the sleep are there any changes in the social rhythms is there a change is there a stressor recently what is the pre bedtime routine of the person many young adults many adolescents have a habit of going to bed with the a tv on or the mobile phone on or the tab on and this is an important factor when we take the history which has to be collected differentiate between various sleep disorders evaluate the sleep and wakefulness patterns is there daytime napping what is the quality and the quantity of the daytime napping question the bed partner and evaluate the impact of the disorder on the patient the quality of life of the patient and also we have to assess the pattern of sleep prospectively over 14 days or over a minimum period of 7 days along with the retrospective history using a sleep diary or wrist actigraphy with a sleep along with a sleep uh, diary and wrist actigraphy is not very difficult nowadays assess the circadian preference of chronotype via questionnaires what do you mean by the chronotype some people are more alert and they prefer a early morning routine but some people are more alert during the evening night hours so what is the patient's preference to um, according to the daily rhythms and we have two common questionnaires which we can use the most commonly used questionnaires are the morning evening eveningness questionnaire and the unique chronotype questionnaire capture on the sleep log the start and end of electronics use each day especially in this contemporary period 
what time the the child or the uh, young adult uses the electronic gadgets the what time the young adult switches it off and plasma melatonin levels are the gold chain standard are the gold standard for assessment of the circadian rhythms for research purposes but in clinical practice we do not assess the plasma melatonin levels because it has to be uh, many samples have to be drawn so we don't use it except for research purposes coming to the treatment approaches per se there are four main types one is the chronotherapy there are no rcts regarding chronotherapy phototherapy that is exposure to light melatonin and wake promoting agents it is by using all these that we juggle uh, we juggle all these approaches and treat the person the primary approach to circadian rhythm sleep wake disorders is to realign the timing of the endogenous circadian rhythm with the required sleep wake schedule chronotherapy means modifying the scheduling of the sleep to resynchronizing the underlying circadian rhythm so that it is at a normally entrained clock time now uh we can also in delayed sleep wake cycle that is what we are now talking about delayed sleep wake type how do we specifically treat that we can slowly advance the circadian rhythms but there is a controversy regarding that we'll examine it later light given 2 hours before the natural wake time shortly after the core temperature minimum that is 2 hours before the natural wake time of the individual advances the circadian clock bright light should be avoided in the evening maybe after 5 pm or 4 pm the person can use dark colored goggles melatonin should be given 1 to 2 hours before sleep onset a combination of morning bright light that is 2 hours before the natural wake time and evening melatonin chronotherapy involving a progressive delay of the sleep wake schedule schedule is also advised but there is a risk of inducing non 24 hour sleep wake type of disorder if we use this method what about advancing the circadian rhythm it is very difficult to advance the circadian rhythms of patients with dspt but delaying is much more easy and if we are delaying using chronotherapy how much do we delay it is said like one one method is by delaying every 3 hours till the person reaches the Uh, the desired time but it is very cumbersome to use this now melatonin also improves depression in patients with dspd so it has got an added benefit in advanced sleep wake type disorder give bright light exposure in the evening between 7 and 9 pm and avoid bright light in the early morning Not 24 hour sleep wake type disorder give melatonin at fixed time every day and that can be given 1 hour before the desired bedtime the american academy of sleep medicine 2015 has this following guideline and it is quite is a very busy slide and to sum up the recommendations i'll just uh, tell the salient points in delayed sleep wake type they say strategically timed melatonin with post awakening light therapy and behavioral interventions they do not recommend chronotherapy advanced sleep wake type evening light therapy and non 24 hour sleep wake type strategically timed melatonin in the irregular one avoids and usually we have this in neurodegenerative disorders like alzheimers and uh, parkinsons avoid sleep promoting agents in demented patients avoid melatonin in elderly patients with de uh, dementia that is what they say and avoid melatonin with light therapy in the early demented use strategically timed melatonin in children and adolescents with iswrt if at all they have and you have it in neurodevelopmental disorders so they don't come up with much um, uh, guidelines regarding uh, this now shift to work disorder their recommendation is that for 
focus on improving the alignment of the sleep clock, circadian clock with the work time, if that is possible. Strategies are increasing bright light at the beginning of shift work and minimize bright light at the end of the shift work by wearing dark glasses while traveling home and using dark curtains in the bedroom with less noise. Use of caffeine or modafinil at the beginning of the work shift and on off days instead of, that is on work off days, instead of completely inverting their schedule, they can adopt a compromise phase position that is going to bed slightly earlier. That is, anchor the sleep by creating a sleep period that overlaps on both work and non-work days because it's very difficult for the shift workers to be completely like the other people during the off days and to shift to their working to their uh, work, uh, their working sh uh, uh, sleep phase during the working days so if we can have a the same routine on both the sleep on the work or uh, weekly days and the week off days and that is known as the anchoring that would be much better for their overall health Recommendations for treatment of sleep wake uh, shift to work disorder. It is like this, like for example, discuss elimination of shift to work schedule. If that is possible, that is the best. But if that is not possible, initiate regular assessment. We have to check for a mood disorder, check for cardiovascular disorders, gastrointestinal disorders, cancers, sleep related comorbidity and other comorbidity. Develop personalized treatment plan, like encourage circadian adaptation and improve the sleep. And also target the work, social and family factors. Include spouse or bed partner in treatment. Optimize life balance and increase recreation and promote healthy style. Though we take this as a very easy thing, their life is not very easy and we have a place to improve the quality of their life. And also they can use modafinil as well as r modafinil to promote wakefulness during their working period. Now, that is all about that I have got to say. And early to bed and early to rise makes a man healthy, wealthy and wise. This is an age old adage which we have all heard very much, but it still holds good. And I hope I have not uh, interrupted with your circadian rhythms by this late night uh, presentation. Uh, thank you for your patient listening and um, apologies for the technical errors. Thank you. Thank you. Once again. Ajit, sir. Oh, Dr. Dayal has joined back. How did you say? Yes, sir. One minute, one minute, one minute. Yeah. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. Okay. Yes, yes. <coughs> uh, hi, Dayal. Uh, yeah, we had, uh, sorry for um, small uh, introduction. So basically, we had had two extremely good topics, and uh, uh, both Dr. Um, Ajit and Dr. Uh, Smita had dealt the topics in an extremely professional way. And uh, I'm sure um, the audience might be having any any questions, uh, Arvind. Sir, uh, uh, I think Sai Krishna will assist you in uh, reading the questions, sir. Dr. Sai. Okay. Okay. Then there are few questions, yeah. sir. I'll ask on behalf of you, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, please, please. What is the role of prebiotic and probiotics in psychiatric drug treatment? Where and when it is indicated? This is to first speaker. Okay. So uh, human studies which we have of uh, uh, till date is uh, probiotics have been used as an anti-anxiety agent. Uh, but not as a standalone agent, maybe as a supplement to our psychotropic uh, medications. Uh, studies have been done where using uh, bifidobacterium and lactobacillus species. And uh, I doubt whether they have been uh, marketed as a therapeutic agent for uh, uh, treating anxiety disorders or depression. Till now. 
thank you sir there is one more question sir we know ibs is a challenging task for the treating psychiatrist and gastroenterologist mm. what will be the choice of antidepressants for these kind of people okay so uh, what i have uh, read from the literature is mainly snris have been uh, found to be the drugs of choice and which is better tolerated than ssris because most of the time people with ibs often have a very sensitive uh, gi tract so ssris because of their tendency to cause uh, asymptotic uh, disease it is not a good choice so snris mainly uh, desmenlafaxine and also tcs like amitriptyline low dosages have been found to be extremely beneficial uh, for a lot of time amitriptyline was in vogue but because of their uh, side effect profile uh, a lot of research has been done using snris and uh, definitely uh, desmenlafaxine seems to be of uh, uh, choice nowadays Sir, there is one more question. Sir. Is it possible to do biopsy of schizophrenia patients and find out gut-brain relationship? What is the practical possibility? Why? Because you had raised that point at the end mm-hmm. of your discussion. Okay, the, uh, that is one speculation which uh, uh, was uh, uh, posted. Uh, that is because we know the fact that 50% of the brain's dopamine is present in the GI tract, but we don't exactly know where to look for that particular dopamine deficiency. So maybe one day a particular scanning might uh, come and maybe certain receptors will be identified, certain markers will be identified, and maybe then we will be able to devise a method of uh, taking a biopsy from the GI tract and look for uh, dopamine uh, or dopamine uh, receptors or transporters and uh, may be able to identify uh, whether they are more prone to develop schizophrenia or not. But for that, we need to identify the correct etiopathogenesis of schizophrenia, which we still don't know. Sir, do you uh, advocate uh, support giving uh, prebiotic or probiotic to autistic children? Uh, I do support. I have seen some patients with uh, a very bad stomach and when they are given probiotics, mainly yogurt, which is commercially available, uh, they have been shown to have some uh, calming effect. That is, there is a reduction in the number of uh, uh, irritability uh, outbursts and they are more calm and their appetite is also much more, uh, uh, much better. Uh, and uh, there even before the uh, usage of probiotics, they might have had certain food fats. But that has also uh, been shown to change when uh, they are on uh, some probiotics, mainly yogurt. And even homemade uh, uh, buttermilk uh, also has been shown to uh, calm down there uh, in some situations. But I don't advocate it as a general uh, uh, method. I This is the only experience which I have used because of uh, the fact that I've been following this area for the past few years. Ashwin, I have one question actually. See, we know that our national school health policies uh, states that uh, at a periodic illness, the children should be deworming, should be given. Mm-hmm. So, this deworming is one in one way to prevent uh, some kind of mm-hmm. specific learning disabilities. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. is there any mechanism to correlate between these two things, any deworming and uh, <laughs> prevention of uh, uh, SLDs or something or poor scholastic achievement? when the child comes to an adolescent or formation of any other psychiatric illness or are there any data or research related to this? Unfortunately, I have not come across any such uh, correlation until now. So maybe we'll have to look into and, the research. Uh, for uh, regarding this uh, Desmanlock vaccine, you have told that uh, as an antidepressant can be used in IBS. So hmm. what is the role of mirtazapine then? Because most, because most of the IBS patients are like diet mm-hmm. control patients. They have been very mm-hmm. sensitive to the diet and they'll mm-hmm. be most like a, a phobic kind of sensation will be there to have the kind of uh, foods. Uh. So mm-hmm. in one way, when you compare with the SNRIs about the mirtazapine has got a very good appetite stimulating uh, yes. drug when compared to other Venla, I mean, Venla and Desvenlafaxin. So would you really mm-hmm. suggest among these three choices would be Desvenlafaxin or mirtazapine? I, my experience is mainly with uh, Desmenlafaxine. vaccine. I have not found much benefit with uh, metazapine. Maybe others who have used metazapine in similar patients will be able to uh, tell more about that in detail. Because I have used metazapine in these kinds of patients. So in one way, they get an increase in the appetite and the yes, patient finds, yeah. And it's got a sedation also in the nighttime. If we start, a patient feels that mm. anxiolytic effect immediately uh, comes down. Mm. 
the patient mm. feels comfortable and uh, a good rapport is developed between the psychiatrist treating psychiatrist because all the way mm. they have come from the gastroenterologist for a very chronic period of uh, treatment and once uh, they start with a small dose of mentazapine and they start showing improvement uh, so with a small so the only thing in ibs is uh, start with the minimum dose and uh, maintain the same dose do not step up the uh, a dose of the mercury yes. has been once a patient doesn't show improvement that why did talk so okay. thank you thank you dr ashwin thank you for a wonderful talk okay. thank you sir thank you sai dr sai you can go ahead yeah there are contact questions to the second speaker <clears throat> are you okay sorry madam yeah first question is is sleep disturbance in psychiatric disorders a trait factor or state factor sleep disorders yeah it can be both yeah because we do find um, as per the literature mood disorders people with delayed sleep wake type disorders having mood disorders and also we know that in mood disorders especially the manic phase there is a, a deficiency of sleep in the um as a state as a when they are in the acute phase there is a um, um, they feel they don't sleep and they feel refreshed it can it can be both a trait as well as a state yeah. there is one more question madam does covid in infection has any effect on sleep pattern lot of patients complain sleep disturbance after recovery yes it has been said that covid 19 has an effect on the sleep uh, problem and uh, melatonin has got an effect on the sleep problems caused by covid and interestingly melatonin has also got uh, properties against inflammation also and uh, again sleep and you know the inflammation all these are very much related and chronobiology is ex- is usually is really an exciting field sleep mm-hmm. depri- depri- deprivation is related to decreasing immunity or changing the immunity and also aging and there is also a term immu- um, uh, Im- uh, immunosense that is both senescence as well as immunity decreasing so uh, sleep has got its role in all this and covid 19 infection and immunity and sleep and of course these are related there is one other question what is the role of melatonin in regulating mind gut relationship is it to me or is it to the first speaker <laughs> i think both, <laughs> I think both can answer <laughs> interestingly clock genes are not there in the brain alone clock genes and these uh, chronotype regulating uh, things are there even in the bad gut uh, bacteria so it is uh, it, 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 there is also a central clock as well as there are peripheral clocks so this is a very interesting and a very um, elaborate um, subject by it, by itself and uh, can i get the question once more it's a bidirectional question actually melatonin what is the role of melatonin in gut brain syndrome and in sleep disorders in that way it has been asked okay so actually who is who, who asked that question <laughs> dr t k anandwalli Okay. Okay. Connect word to speech uh, to the two talks as well. That is quite good. There are there are genes existing in the bacteria in our gut also, which influences the sleep. So of course, melatonin can be affecting um, both the the main the 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 central clock as well as the peripheral clocks. That is what I can say. Any comments, Doctor Ashwin? Can you make some comments over there? Nothing. I am not aware of that. Uh, or I would like to go along. along with what dr smitha has told okay. i think uh, rajesh sir can make some comment <laughs> <laughs> no basically as i said this is younger generations topic as i said before uh, mind gut relation melatonin basically what i as a person uh, as i said i'm have an objection about calling this as mind at all we all know that it is uh, brain and uh, sleep is a very important function of the brain and a drug which disturbs one part of the brain will always be correcting the other part of the brain so i am sure they should have some effect i am not aware of any study uh, where uh, melatonin has been studied in uh, uh, gut and its uh, disorders so i can't make a comment right madam i got a couple of questions 
one is uh, there are combinations coming with the melatonin and benzodiazepine and all how far uh, do you support it or uh, against it and uh, every antidepressant has got a uh, shift in circadian rhythm so that again it, it alters the circadian rhythm what is the effect on that and how to neutralize that and do you support benzodiazepine uh, for sleep problem you say you melatonin can be given for uh, avoid melatonin uh, in the old age and is there any good sedative for elderly people especially with the dementia melatonin actually acts not as a hypnotic that is what the literature says it is a chronobiotic it changes the circadian rhythm so rather than using as a hypnotic it it is best used as a chronobiotic and therefore combining melatonin and benzodiazepines we have to, we need to be careful on what exactly we are planning to do when do we give melatonin at least 1 to 2 hours before the desired sleep at what time we want to sleep we have to give it at least 1 to 2 hours before that and the what is the ideal time of giving benzodiazepines so my personal thing is it should not be combined together and where are we going to use it exactly because benzodiazepines both benzodiazepines as well as melatonin benzodiazepines mainly are not indicated in elderly people with dementias because of many risks you know, they have the risk of fall the risk of um, even cognitive decline so they're not at all recommended i mean um and melatonin is also not recommended by the uh, um, american uh, sleep society for for the for dementia and for antidepressants antidepressants in uh, i asked this na antidepressants alter the circadian rhythm uh, i am not, not aware exactly as to how they uh, whether they alter or no, not they actually they face advance Uh, all uh, all SSRI and uh, TCAs, they face advance the circadian rhythm. Sleep latency is increased. That's what Sir is telling, actually. Yes. With the SSRI, the induction of SSRIs. So, Sir is Sir question is that like uh, uh, does the pa- patients of and I mean depression really gets benefited with using with an uh, SSRI with only with benzodiazepine or with the combination of benzodiazepine with the melatonin agent or with the plain melatonin agent that's what the question it has been put forward ssri is with benzodiazepines ssri is with benzodiazepine melatonin or ssri with melatonin so what will be the choice of yours from your practice practical uh, practical point of view that depends upon the person having a depression and how much is the the person sleep is affected the age of the person with the sleep disorder and what exa- and how exactly it is affecting the quality of life of the person all these factors determine as to whether we should be using benzodiazepines and whether we should be using melato- melatonin because as we said melatonin is not exactly acting as a hypnotic it is acting as a chronobiotic and there are studies saying that it, mel- melatonin has got good effects in depression it also uh, relieves depression to depressive symptoms to some extent so depending upon the person's clinical symptoms we may have to um use these uh, depending upon how the person presents and what his needs and the quality of life needs to be and i have some more questions i'll just put forward very fast now seasonal affective disorder we have been talking in the past so in and out about the sads so sad seasonal affective disorder is one area we have been touching a lot in the past about the during the winter uh, period uh, but due to the di- diminution of light uh, the symptoms of depression occurs now what is the concept current concept of sad now and where it stands actually it is there uh, still we use this a uh, diagnostic criteria either in uh, dsm 5 or in icd 11 so what is your uh, uh, understanding of this sleep uh, seasonal affective disorder and delayed sleep fake type disorder are very much related and many people with delayed sleep oh, that- do have a uh, seasonal affective disorder and again in our country where this night this light uh, uh, dark cycle is more or less constant throughout 365 days it is a different story as compared to certain countries where it is very different like in winter and that is how we have this winter depressions and seasonal affective disorder 
and many people for that uh, 24 that uh, in order to preserve that uh, day night cycle they have to use blinds thick blinds and curtains but our country we are fortunate in not in having almost a stable rhythm throughout the year most of the parts of our country there are some few more questions on the, this one uh, sai doctor can you just read the questions there is one more question to the first speaker many times sir many times the psychiatric medications have constipation which doesn't get better with dalcalax or lactulose what can be given for a long term which is yes, any for all of you you know, join me to one lot. What I would suggest is a proper uh, meal with uh, good uh, fiber. And uh, when it comes to medications, uh, especially when it uh, uh, happens because of uh, close up in, uh, Procolor Pride uh, has been found to be a good option uh, for treating. Uh, repeat, sir. Repeat. What medicine? Procolor Pride. It comes in 1 milligram, sir. 1 milligram and 2 milligram tablets, it's available. It has been shown. It's a 5 h 2 a 2 a receptor antagonist, sir, actually. So, it, but it has to be used on a regular basis, sir. Uh, P-R-U-C-A-L-O-P-R-I-D-E. Oh, right, right, right. Okay, okay. It comes with the brand name Consticalo. Yes, sir, but uh, that has got some problems, sir. That is, and yeah. uh, that uh, the people have started uh, opposing using that medicine. Okay. Uh, Torrent has introduced that medicine. Yes, yes but uh, people say that don't use it. Okay. It has got some carcinogenic effect and some other things. Report came <laughs> after that. Uh, I stopped using that medicine. Okay. And very expensive, more than very expensive, <laughs> and more than our uh, antipsychotics. Yes. Okay, sir. Sorry, any questions? Yeah, madam, there is one more question, madam. Ago melatonin, to a melatonergic drug due to its 5 HTA one year receptors action, I suggest it can be given in the data. What is your comment, madam? It's usually given at night because it is a melatonergic antidepressant. Can I give a suggestion? Yes, please. Yeah. Uh, it can be it can be given as a BD formulation also because what I would suggest is now uh, since melatonin is a hormone, so it is secreted from the pineal gland. So uh, the melatonin secretion occurs only when the light goes down. So the role of action of melatonin is like first thing is by induction of for the induction of sleep and maintenance of sleep, the hormone should be released. So the, that is the first part of the goal. And in the daytime, the action of serotonin receptor mechanism acts very well so that it acts as an anti-anxiety pro uh, uh, property. So henceforth, it can be used on a BD uh, doses also. So th that will be my uh, suggestion. So I suggest that it can be used either in as a monotha I mean, uh, uh, at a night nighttime dose for only for the sleep disorders or with a combination of uh, any other uh, small dose of benzodiazepines along with uh, the uh, reduction of anxiety symptoms. Sir, if time permits, there is one more last question, sir. Can yeah, then sir, you, can first, you can finish up with that. Are there biomarkers of sleep rhythm disturbances other than ACTH stimulation? Biomarkers of sleep rhythm disturbances. Yeah, I have... This was posted by Dr. Satish Raghavan from Tamil Nadu. I'm not aware. Biomarkers of sleep rhythm disturbances. Yeah. Like EEG, something. Not aware of it. Actually, yeah, we have, we have polysomnography one way for try to find out. We have to do all this actigraphy, the uh, all the uh, lab laboratory we do in the sleep medicine laboratory, we do all this uh, polysomnography test. So these may be considered to be one of the biomarkers, but it is not indicative that uh, the biomarkers of sleep therapies. So there are a lot of things out there because all patients who are undergoing the uh, uh, the polysomnography does not have a symptom of a, a symptom of insomnia or a symptom syndrome of insomnia as a classical feature. So, so these are mostly done in the, on uh, a functional kind of uh, set of therapies rather than you know, at, a, at a practical point, no psychiatrist or no neurologist or no pulmonologist does this kind of uh, polysomnography. So to find out the bio, to find out the markers for uh, sleep uh, wake cycle disorders. That is not needed to diagnose a circadian rhythm sleep weight disorder. It's Please. not needed. So it is for only for research purpose it can be done. 
Okay, sir, we can finish. Okay. okay. Finish. Sir, Rajesh, sir, your comments about the yeah. Any comments about the yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, and it has been a fantastic uh, evening for me. And uh, the both the speakers have, uh, I think, as I said before, has put the right the things in right perspective. And I'm also equally impressed with the number of questions and some tricky questions too. In fact, it was so tricky that we wanted to know who asked that question. Uh, so good, uh, we are happy about it. And coming back again, uh, the uh, uh, coming to the. Uh, I think which we are talking about, we are talking about uh, the antidepressants in these gut disorders, but most of the gastroenterologists use dopamine 2 antagonists, something like levosulfiride is the uh, darling of uh, gastroenterologists nowadays. Sir, for them, uh, uh, this codeine is a tablet, sir, actually. Yeah. Codeine, they spoil people with codeine. Yes. Yeah, codeine. <laughs> so, they... The sad part is that uh, it is psychiatrists who we ourselves to blame because we have allowed every Tom, Dick and Harry to meddle with the drugs which we use and they take credit for everything. So I think it is time we have to put our foot down and say that this is our area of specialization. Anyway, thank you. I think there are a lot of disturbance. Uh, anyway, thank you, Ajit, uh, for bringing a lot of... Uh, uh, yeah, Dr. Ajit, uh, we thank you for bringing uh, very important uh, areas. Then coming back to sleep, equally disturbing is the negligence of our psychiatrists in this area. How can you imagine a pulmonologist be the in charge of sleep vehicle, I mean sleep labs in most of the uh, institutions? It is, I don't know what, how a pulmonologist is related to sleep. Except that he has something, uh, some odd uh, abnormal disorder in his armamentarium. So I think it is time for us psychiatrists to, I mean, uh, imp improvise, improve, and also show the society that we are the masters of brain. We are the people who master the brain, and we are the people who should be in charge of these sleep laboratories. And also, most of the cognitive function lab, cognitive labs and all. Hopefully, today's uh, discussion will have some impact on our younger generation to show their skills, showcase their talents in both gastro and also in sleep medicine. So, I thank once again uh, the organizers for giving me this opportunity to do beautiful uh, lectures today by both Dr. Rajit and Dr. Smita. And uh, I also thank uh, the, the active participants of our uh, zone. Thank you so much. And uh, back to Dr. Ramakrishna. Dr. Dayan, you can just give the vote of thanks. Yes, I uh, respect the uh, chairperson, presenters, office bearers, my dear friends. Coming to the end of this uh, very interesting academic a session that we had in a series of monthly webinars of some uh, CME committee. Uh, outset, let me thank both the speakers, uh, both Dr. Ajit and Dr. Smita, for taking up two very interesting vital because uh, these two are vital functions, sleep and appetite. And I think this very interesting and very academic generating a lot of questions, answering those questions very effectively and keeping this evening uh, very interesting and informative. I thank both of you for your effort and your, your uh, I mean, uh, work that uh, benefited all of us. Uh, I would like to thank from the part and on behalf of the C committee and IPS also uh, today our own dear Dr. N.N. Raju, sir, for uh, despite his uh, very schedule, uh, consenting to chair the session, be us through, uh, guiding us through the, the different questions, and also in his own way, uh, uh, showing the and uh, uh, telling us very clearly that it's our duty as psychiatrists to take up and command issues vital to psychiatry.
psychiatric disorders. Uh, thank you so much, sir. I would like to thank our Krishnan uh, sir for uh, all these activities of IPS in, in his own brilliant way and supporting us all through the different and it is that this should have a monthly academic session and the structure of the sessions and the kind of uh, topics or speakers that we should have. And uh, we see that with the increasing participation with every session, that uh, this is a very, very, very worthwhile idea worth going in the future. So thank you so much. I thank uh, the chairperson, uh, uh, president of IPAL, Dr. Minister, and all other executive committee members who have uh, been actively involved in this conduct of this uh, session. I thank Dr. Arvind uh, specifically for his uh, wholehearted effort making sure that the sessions go well as planned and, and achieve what we intend through it. Uh, having a lot of participation from uh, active participation from our members, students and colleagues. I also all the all the psychiatrist students who have been pushed numbers today to listen to this academic uh, feast that we had today and hope each and every two will continue to to follow the scientific sessions that we have every month and support us in all the activities of the semi committee. This words I would uh, thank one and all once again and uh, stop here. JAPS, good night. All the academic activities, uh, lectures will be available in our IPS South Zone website and YouTube. This is for your kind information. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Raju, sir. Thank you, speakers. Dominant, sir. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Sir, night I will call you, sir. Ramanan, sir. Night I can call you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs>